نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من احلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقن اتباعا اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقن اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ سورہ البقرہ ورس سکسٹی سیون وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَزْبَخُ بَقَرَةً قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِزُونَ حُزُوَا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And recall when Musa alayhi salam said to his people, Indeed, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. They said, Do you take us in ridicule? He said, I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. In this verse 61, uh, 67 and in the following verses also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about an event in which the people of Bani Israel were asked to slaughter a cow. So this is from where the surah gets its name, Surah Al-Baqarah, because in Arabic, Bakara means the cow. So Surah Bakara means a surah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated the story of a cow. Now before proceeding with the discussion of verse 67 to 73, uh, I would want to uh, narrate the whole event so that uh, after uh, relating to the event, it would be easier to go through the meaning and the messages of all the verses. Now, uh, the verse number 67 to 63, Allah is explaining the whole story and narrating the event, but uh, the format of this particular story is somewhat unique. It is unique in uh, what is the chronologically the beginning of the story is mentioned at the end of the revealed story in Quran. That is the part of the story which happened or the events which happened in the start are mentioned in the later verses and the part which occurred at a later stage is mentioned in the verses before the, before the uh, later verses. So, the story relates an incident which took place in the time of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And uh, it is said that there was a wealthy man from among the Bani Israel. And it so happened that he did not have any parents and he did not even have any children or offsprings. His only legal heirs were hence his nephews, his real nephews. And they were so waiting for the death of their uncle so as to inherit this wealth. Now, however, because of the longevity of the uncle, some of the would-be heirs, they became restless and they became impatient and they became tired of waiting. And so you know what did? So what they did was out of the last of money and out of the greed and desire and the love of money and the wealthy riches what did shaitan make them do they expedited they expedited the process of their inheriting by murdering the uncle how heartless and how thankless now when the uncle was murdered and the body was finally discovered no one would admit to the murder nor was there any evidence to prove who had killed him. The heirs of the murdered uncle, then they started to, they began to accuse one another and uh, put the blame of the murder on each other and uh, cast suspicions on each other. So in order to settle the whole issue, 
uh, these uh, the nephews they decided that they would uh, take the whole uh, story in the event for decision to uh, prophet musa alayhi salam and they took they went to hazrat musa alayhi salam and they asked him to arbitrate and uh, they were then what happened was that hazrat uh, once they brought the whole event to hazrat musa alayhi salam for his decision and for his arbitration has the musa alayhi salam was instructed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell the people to slaughter a cow and uh, then strike the dead man with the limb of the slaughtered cow now when musa alayhi salam conveyed this to the people who had come instead of immediately adhering to allah's commandments they were they were unable to fathom and they were not able to comprehend the connection and the relevance between the murdered man and slaughtering the cow and uh, what did they say they said a'udhu billahi an akuna min al they said atattakhizuna huzwa that do you take us in a jest or are you trying to ridicule with us and make fun with us and uh, as the musa alayhi salam obviously did not like all the command and instead you know instead of believing in allah they thought that musa alayhi salam had dared to joke about something which was as serious like the commandment of allah muslims don't joke about the commandments of allah and so musa alayhi salam responded by saying a'udhu billahi an akuna min al jahilin that i seek refuge in allah from being among the ignorant that it is the it is the behavior and it is the mannerism of the ignorant people of people who are indulging in ignorance that they dare to joke about and they dare to make fun after listening the commandments of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so hazrat musa alayhi salam uh, condemned their comment and what happened then that uh, once they realized they realized that hazrat musa alayhi salam is not joking and it is actually the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in order to try to evade and to escape carrying out and obeying the commandment of allah they began to behave ignorant about the type of the cow being requested for slaughter even though at that point you know at that point once they were ordered to slaughter a cow at this stage it could have been any cow any cow in the city around them and in the place and the locality around them would have been sufficient but because they wanted to disobey allah and they did not want to obey this commandment and do they wanted to avoid carrying out the commandment so they started behaving behaving ignorant and they started behaving dumb and they said what qalud ulana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hiya they said call upon your lord to make us clear what it is <coughs> that what sort of cow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to um, to slaughter and uh, they began to ask unnecessary questions in the hope of evading the command and escaping obedience as it did so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it more difficult for them by specifying the exact cow they needed to find allah does not make things burdensome for people but uh, it is uh, it is people who often do them to themselves Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to the request and Allah said that uh, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam said that Allah says that it is a cow which is uh, neither old nor it is a virgin but is in between the two so uh, Hazrat Musa said fafulu ma tu'marun do what you have been commanded and ordered to do but they were still not satisfied the stubborn the obstinate the disobedient transgressors they were still not satisfied and they inquired further they said call upon your lord to show us what his color is like and as musa said that allah says it is yellow it is yellow in color and it's bright in color and it's pleasing to the observers however this too was insufficient for them you know they were actually repeatedly asking questions because they actually did not want to slaughter the cow they did not want to obey this commandment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they wanted evasion in some form or the other 
So they again asked. This too seemed to be insufficient for them. And so for the third time they asked again. They said, call upon your Lord to make us clear what it actually is. Indeed, the cow looks like to us. If Allah will guide us, we will be guided. So again, Hazrat Musa a.s. told them that Allah has responded by answering them. And Allah responded, further narrowing down the cow. Narrowing down the condition of the cow they needed to choose. Allah said that it is a cow which is neither trained to plow the land nor irrigate the fields. And it is free from fault. And there is no spot on it also. Then they said, now you have come to the truth. And they slaughtered it, but they could hardly do. So from having the choice of slaughtering any cow in the land, they finally restricted themselves to a very, very rare and an unusual type of a cow. And it was almost like impossible to find it. And why was it all this? This was all this because of their excessive questioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after his commandments. And um, that is why Prophet ﷺ has been reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who in Muslim that Prophet ﷺ said from that from that which destroyed those who came before you was excessive questioning and differing from their prophets. So this was what the people of Bani Israel were doing now. Now, according to um, some works of the Seer, it has been reported that uh, in Bani Israel, in their locality, there was a poor man. And uh, he was the son of an old woman, but he was a very dutiful and a very obedient son of his mother. And he possessed this particular cow which was needed. And um, he was not selling this cow because it was the sole source of survival. It was the only source of income for that person. And uh, he was not willing to sell the cow. And um, it is reported in certain uh, tafasir that uh, they had to weigh the cow in the price of gold. And um, so they had to buy this cow from that poor person. And you know what? That person who was an obedient son and who was a dutiful son and he was very poor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed, changed his economic status by how getting him all that money for that cow this is allah he is the razik he is the sustainer he says himself in the quran he provides he provides for the persons for the peoples as much as he wants and sometimes beyond limits he is the controller of all forms of risk and it also shows how Allah helps those who are dutiful and who are obedient to the parents. And so what happened that the heirs of the slaughtered man, of uh, the murdered man, they had to pay him all that great deal of money in order to purchase the cow now. And uh, it is also said that the reason Allah chose the cow was to uh, make them understand how they were taking it as an out idol. I will be explaining all this again, inshallah. Now, eventually, when they slaughtered, they bought this cow, they slaughtered the cow, and then they did as they were ordered by Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They struck this, uh, the murdered uncle with a limb from the cow, and uh, this brought him back to life with the permission of Allah. And he got up and he sat up and he named the murderer. So, this is the whole story which is being narrated here. Now before reading and reciting the verses and going through the translation, let's just uh, sum up the lessons and the morals we learn from the story. The story highlights the importance of submission to Allah, the importance of obeying His commandments as this is the core part of belief in Allah. The main lesson learned and the morals conveyed by the story is that it is it is simply not not uh, it is not 
a right of a human being to ask and to interrogate about the questions of Allah. A person, a bondsman, cannot have the audacity to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to interrogate, to interrogate and to doubt and to question the commandments of Allah. This is the mannerism of the cursed people, of the cursed Bani Israel. To indulge in the debate after listening to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also a behavior of the cursed nation, the cursed people and the transgressors. To keep on asking and cross-questioning as a delaying tactics instead of obedience is the behavior of the cursed people and the cursed nations. The wanted and the appreciated behavior of the bondsmen and the believers is what? Samirna wa atu'ana. We listen and we obey. Or the liked and the wanted and the appreciated behavior of the believers is as Allah mentions the behavior of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim qala aslamtu li rabbil alameen that when Allah ordered him and Allah told him and gave him a commandment and asked him to obey aslim obey what did he say without any delay without any postponement without any interrogation without any doubt without any cross questioning without any hesitation Aslamtu, I am obedient to my sustainer and to the sustainer of the worlds. So this is the behavior which is wanted by Allah from all his bondsmen and from all the believers. After Aslim, there should be a there should be Aslim too. Questioning or asking is not disliked. Some people might just start believing that we are not just supposed to ask about religion about the issues of religion no it's not like that questioning or asking about the matters of religion about the about the topics of quran and hadith is not disliked if it because of the purpose is to is a desire to increase or to correct the knowledge or to correct our behavior and our actions. But if the intention or the purpose of questioning is ridiculing or making fun of the asked person or belittling the asked person or asking just for the sake of criticism or, or just to escape or evade a commandment or to refute or negate a commandment, then this type of questions is disliked and it is disproved. The second, another thing which we learn from these verses and from the whole event is that how greed and selfishness is disliked and contempt and how disapproved and disliked love of this of this world, the lust of money, the lust and the desire of the wealthy riches is, how condemned it is, how disapproved it is, and how unwanted it is to have your heart full of the lust of money and the desire of the wealthy riches. How bad a state of heart it is, because you know, a person who is lustful, a person who is selfish, a person who is greedy and has a greedy heart, has a selfish heart, it will be very easy for him to open the doors to such, such major sins. The nephews, they were greedy, they were selfish, they were hard-hearted and they were lustful and they were desirous of the wealthy riches, of the riches of the world. And they turned into what? They turned into murderers. So these are the feelings we need to take out of our hearts. And we need to do a very strict accountability and we need to assess if we have certain such feelings in our hearts because if there are such feelings in the heart, then they will be, they will be opening the gates to such major sins. 
and moreover we also learn that indecent haste and getting impatient is also an act of shaitan and this creates the worst form of fitna and also leads to major sins al ajla tu min ash shaitan the nephews were just hasteful and there was an indecent haste so all forms of indecent hastes this is an act of shaitan a'udhu billahi min ash shaitanir rajim so now going through all the background of the story and the events of the story now let's just read the verses and the translation so that it will be easy for us to relate to them verse number 68 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people of Bani Israel when they were ordered to <coughs> slaughter the cow they said what qalud ulana rabbaka yubayyil lana ma hiya they said call upon your lord to make us clear what it is that is what is the cow like qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratun la farizun wala biqr awanum bayna zalik faf'alu ma tu'marun has the musa alayhi salam said allah says it is a cow which is neither old nor it is a virgin but median between that so do what you are commanded that was the essence that was the actual essence do what you are commanded when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to slaughter a cow then get hold of any cow get hold of any cow in your community and slaughter it because it is a do of allah and that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after ordering or giving a commandment expects the bondman to do and that is what hazrat musa alayhi salam ordered them to do verse number 69 they again said qalud ulana rabbaka yubayyil lana ma launuha they said call upon your lord and why they were repeatedly asking they asking hazrat musa alayhi salam to call upon their lord because they knew that hazrat musa alayhi salam would talk and converse to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call upon your lord to show us what is her color then what did hazrat musa alayhi salam said qala innaha انه يقول انها بقره صفراء فاكي لونها تسر الناظرين he said allah says it is a yellow cow bright in color pleasing to the observers so you know here the conditions and the specifications of the cow are getting narrow and narrower after their questions verse number 70 they again made another question for the third time qalud ulana rabbaka yubayyil lana ma hiya innal baqara tashabaha alayna wa inna insha allah la muhtadun they said call upon your lord to make us clear to make clear to us what it is Indeed all cows look alike to us and indeed if Allah wills we will be guided Verse number 71 Has the Musa alayhi salam said what qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratun la zalulun tusirul arza wa la taskil harfa musallamatu lashiyata fiha qalu al an ja'ta bil haqq fa zabahuha wa ma qadu yaf'alun has musa alayhi salam said allah says it is a cow neither trained to plow the earth nor to irrigate the field one free from fault with no spot upon her <coughs> so now you see the specification of the cows have become very very immensely strict and this type of a cow became extremely difficult to find now here they said now you have come with the truth so they slaughtered her but they could hardly do it that is actually they did not want to slaughter the cow so they went on asking and uh, the conditions and the characters of the cow were becoming stricter and stricter from verse number 68 to 71 now 
one pe one question which people generally ask is that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask them to slaughter a cow the matter was that the rulers of Egypt to whom the people of the Bani Israel were taken as slaves these rulers the Kipti rulers of Egypt they were indulging in polytheism and they worshipped the cow they had made the idols of the cow and they worshipped the cow so under the influence of their masters and their rulers impressed by them and idolizing and glamorizing their masters and rulers under their influence they also worshipped the cow and they glamorized and they believed in the sanctity of the cow and they believing in the sanctity of the cow they were superstitious that if they harmed or if they touched the cow with any bad intention it would bring misfortune to them or any calamity might strike and so they were just superstitious because of the concept of the sanctity of the cow in their hearts now in this event one of the purpose to make them slaughter the cow was to make them understand the falsehood of the concept of the sanctity of the cow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make them realize that their superstitious beliefs about harming the cow were false and they were totally wrong in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to realize that by killing the cow not only they would stay safe and sound but also killing and slaughtering the cow would settle their issue would settle their their fight and would settle their dispute that is why it was ordered to show and to prove the falsehood of the polytheism they were acting upon and the second reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show them his power his knowledge and his control by showing them the miracle that the dead person after being struck with the meat of the cow the person would get up and would start talking so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started trying to uh, after showing them this miracle Allah tried to show him his power and his control and thirdly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to show how Allah is capable of bringing bringing into life the dead this was shown to them that so that they develop a stronger faith in life after death and develop fear of hereafter but despite all that they fail to learn all what was intended for them to learn and this will be explained in the next few verses now verse number 72 <coughs> Allah says wa is qataltum nafsan fadaraqtum fiha wallahu mukhrijum ma kuntum taktumun allah says and recall when you slew a man and disputed over it but allah was to bring out that which you were concealing so you realize here the initial or the starting part of the story is narrated in the later verses and the later part of the story is related in the verses from 67 to 71 and then in verse number 73 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fa qulna dribuhu bi ba'dha qazalika yuhyi Allahu al-mawta wa yurikum ayatihi la'allakum ta'qilun and we said strike the slain man with a part of it thus does Allah bring the dead to life and he shows you his sign that you may reason so this is exactly why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had asked them to slaughter the cow and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says faqulna dribuhu who said Allah ordered them and uh, Allah ordered them to strike whom with what Allah strike they asked them order them to strike the murdered uncle's body with the part of the slaughtered cow's limb and uh, what happened the slaughtered uncle he the dead body 
uh, it was struck with the piece of meat and be iznillah with the order of almighty allah the dead person gained life the ankle sat up alive and he named the name of the murderer the nephew and uh, this settled the whole issue so by doing all this allah has disapproved the whole event allah has disapproved the sanctity of the cow Allah settled their case, gave them a proof of the falsehood of their superstitious belief regarding the cow, and above all, Allah proved the truth of the life hereafter, and Allah showed them that it is by the will of Allah that a murdered person can get alive and talk again very in front of their allies. As uh, and there was, there will be no doubt about it that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can put to life all dead people. Inna nahnu nuhiyil mauta, as Allah says in Surah Yasin, and uh, the whole event also uh, highlighted the faith of hereafter and life after death. That is, wa bil akhirati hum yukinun. This was strengthened, and uh, when this was the person. This actually happened in front of their eyes, and they saw all this happening. They still refused believing in Allah and believing in hereafter. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the next verse comments as to what their state was and what the reason was that they failed to still to have faith and still to have belief in Allah. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala help us connect to Quran. and be steadfast in our connection to Quran may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us get the best learn the best lessons and morals and help to correct our behaviors and attitudes regarding the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana dhunubana wa qina adhab an-nar rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin sumami